Hey guys, this is Paulina and in this video I'm going to talk to you about modals and semi-modals. There are quite a lot of them, so if you want to take some notes, prepare your notebook please. You'll also need your course book to do a couple of activities there. So please get ready and let's get it started. You might wonder what are modals and semi-modals? In my way of expressing this, modal verbs are strong verbs which express somebody's attitude and they don't need any help in a sentence, which means that they can be used to make questions and negatives and they don't need any auxiliary verb such as do, be, etc. Semimodals, on the other hand, quite often are followed by two infinitive and they do need an auxiliary verb to make questions, negative sentences, etc. Let's have a look at them all and I'm sure it will get easier as you see all of the verbs in use. Our first modal verb is can. We use it with their infinitive, which means a verb without any ing, without to, only the verb. And we use it to talk about general ability in the present and the future. For example, George can read and he's only four. We use it for requests. Can you lend me some money? And for permission. Yes, you can borrow my iPad. I'm sure you know the verb can very well as you often use it to ask me whether you can go to the toilet and when I say yes, you can go to the toilet. Remember that we use can't plus bare infinitive to show that we are sure that something isn't true. For example, David can't be at university. He's only 15. The next verb on our list is could. We use could with bare infinitive, which means the verb without do and no ing ending. We use it to talk about general ability in the past or past form of can. So, Tina could use a computer when she was six. We use it to talk about possibility. The company could go bankrupt. For polite requests, could you tell me where the manager is, please? And to make suggestions, you could study information technology or maybe English philology. What would you like to study? Next, we've got two verbs with similar meanings. The first one is may. We use may with yes, that's right, bare infinitive, which means... Yep, the verb with no to, no ing. We use it to talk about possibility in the future. He may decide to work for a big company. For polite requests, only with I and we. So, may I leave early? And for polite permission, yes, you may use my laptop. We use might with bare infinitive, you know what that means, to talk about possibility in the future, Henry might pass all his exams at the end of the year. As the past tense of May, he said he might go to Peru. So far, so good. If you're not following me, stop the video, go back and come back later. The next on our list is must. We use must with bare infinitive to say that something is necessary, all equipment must be returned at the end of the day, to talk about obligations, you must answer all the questions, to show that we are sure that something is true, he must be very ambitious as he works so hard, and to recommend something, you must read this article, it's great. We use mustn't with bare infinitive to talk about something that is not allowed 
It's forbidden. You mustn't take things without asking. Or you mustn't cheat during your pet exam. All right. So be careful. Must and mustn't don't have opposite meanings. They have different meanings. The next on our list is should. We use should with their infinitive to give advice. You shouldn't give up on your dreams, and to ask for advice. Should I return this faulty gadget? It's worth mentioning that should has a synonym, ought to, which can also be used to give advice. But it is not usually used in the question form, so be careful. They ought to set some goals for their future. Please remember about should and ought to. They really like it on the pet exam. And I think the last modal verb on our list is would.、Um, we use would with bare infinitive. Can you see a pattern here? For actions that we did regularly in the past, but that we don't do now. I would always look forward to school starting again after the summer. So you use it just like used to in the past, and we use would for polite requests. Would you let me interview you? Now it's time to look at our semi-modal verbs. The first is needn't. We use needn't plus ber infinitive. To say that something is not necessary, you needn't worry about me. I'm fine. Remember that we can also use need as an ordinary verb. It has affirmative, negative, and question form, and it is usually used in the present simple and the past simple. It is then followed by a full infinitive. He needs to speak to his teacher. She doesn't need to work. She's a millionaire. And do you need to take the test again? So be careful. Needn't with bare infinitive. Need with full infinitive. That's the tricky part. If you need to stop and have a look at the examples one more time. The next few structures are easy peasy. You've seen them a hundred times. We use be able to to talk about general ability. We are able to use the internet to find information. When we talk about present,、uh, we could even substitute it with can. We can use the internet to find information, and we use be able to to talk about specific ability in the past. Could. Cannot be used here. He wasn't able to convince his boss to give him a day off. Okay, be careful. That's the main difference here. The next is have to. We use have to to say that something is necessary. You have to work hard to achieve your goals. Does he have to finish the project tonight? And we also use have to to talk about obligation. Jeremy has to study tonight because he has an exam tomorrow. What do you have to study today? Be very careful with mustn't and don't have to. There is an important difference between mustn't and don't have to. We use mustn't. To say that something is not allowed, whereas we use "don't have to" to show that there is no obligation or necessity. <laughs> or necessity, you mustn't cheat in an exam. You don't have to go to university. It's your decision. Can you see the difference? I hope you do, because this is very important. They also like this on your pet exam, so be prepared. Now it's time to have a look at some exercises from a course book. So please open a course book on page sixty-one. 
Exercise A will check how much you remember from what you have just seen. You need to complete the table with the modal verbs. You need to match functions with modal and semi-modal verbs. If you want to do this task now, please pause the video as I'm going to show you the answers in a very few seconds. All right? Okay, let's have a look at the answers. I hope you got it all right. If you have any questions, I recommend you to have a look, one more look at the video. And if you still have questions, please ask your teacher. Remember, this video is supposed to help you, not substitute your teacher. All right? Let's have a look at exercise B. This time we have to read the sentences and match them to a function from exercise A. So quite a similar exercise. Again, if you want to do it now, pause the video because I'll show you the answers very, very soon. And here are the answers. I hope you didn't have any problems. If you do, have a look at the presentation and ask your teacher. I know it's a lot of modal verbs at once, but the truth is you have seen them all in your English learning. So don't worry, trust your instincts. And this is the end of this video. Thank you very much for being with me. Uh, the materials I've used in this video come from Close Up B1 Plus Second Edition by Sengensch Learning. I've used grammar reference and grammar exercises from the course book. Thank you very much. I'll see you in class. Bye.